reversing degenerative disc disease. So understanding the basic structure of the spine, we understand there's three main sections. First thing, there's the cervical area, which is the neck, the thoracic spine, which is the middle of the upper back, and the lumbar spine, which is considered the lower back. Each section consists of vertebrae or bones that are stacked upon each other in a straight alignment from the front and normal curves from the side. When adjacent, these vertebrae that are stacked upon each other are also separated by something called an intervertebral disc. Now, discs consist of two really main parts, a gel-like interior nucleus and a durable, tough outer annulus. The discs are made up of water, fibrous cartilage, collagen, other substances, and these discs perform many essential roles in preserving spinal health and function. The discs primarily give the spine structure. They allow for the normal structure of the spine, and they combine forces and enable the spine to be really flexible. They provide cushioning between the vertebra, but they're not really designed to really bear a tremendous amount of weight, which I'll explain in a second. And they kind of act like a shock absorber or a spacer between these bones. So what exits between these bones are something called spinal nerves. So when discs are nice, healthy, and in healthy position, everything's in the right alignment, the spinal nerves are not inferior with as they go through the spinal cord, through, when they exit out through the spine or the spinal cord into the body, and they go out through something called intervertebral foramen, or IVFs. Now, when discs become degenerative or degenerative disc disease or it's something called DDD, the discs first thing that start to happen is they get thinner and discs can be very affected by, uh, by spinal alignment. These discs begin to deteriorate or they become thinner or less dehydrated, which we'll talk about in a second. And as these discs deteriorated, they become something called disc desiccated and they bulge and they herniate. So the first step happens is that something happens for the spine to typically shift out of its normal alignment. When it shifts out of its normal alignment, it puts more weight or more pressure on one side of the disc versus the other. This tends to squeeze some of the water out of this disc. At this stage, this is only a response to the alignment. At this stage, it, this can be diagnosed as very mild degenerative disc disease. If things are realigned and you rehydrate the disc better, this, the, the progression of this process stops to occur. But however, if it stays in alignment, this disc now starts to go through a degenerative phase, and now it starts to lose physical height. It now starts to affect the position of the bones above and below, and the spine actually now becomes misaligned as a result of, uh, further misaligned as a result of this. But normally alignment tends to be the first thing, and then as a result of it, the disc begins to deteriorate. This develops slowly over time and progresses slowly over time, and therefore symptoms tend to come on slowly over time. The first thing can be stiffness and lack of mobility. Then it can lead to the kind of dull back pain or dull pa pain in the area of degeneration. As it starts to compress further, it can start affecting radicular pain felt into the neck, arms, hips, legs, and things like sciatica. Now the question we get asked, is disc disease reversible? Well, kind of. It can be kind of reversed in early stages or dealt with in early stages. But once degenerative disc disease starts to occur, it becomes much more difficult to reverse as it becomes more severe because degenerative disc disease is not really a disease. It's not something that you catch. It's not something that's, that you're afflicted with. It is a response to abnormal alignment that causes these discs to deteriorate like kind of like an unaligned car. Spinal discs, unfortunately, once you're through your growth stage in an adult, they're the largest structures in the body that don't actually have any type of vascular supply. They have very little blood supply, so therefore they can't regenerate properly or heal properly because they don't have good blood supply. As children, damaged discs can heal very, very well because you have a lot of blood supply going to those discs. But once you're fully grown, the, the, those vessels tend to weather back and therefore you don't have good blood supply. Discs receive their nutrients through a similar process of osmosis. It means that through osmosis and inhibition, uh, the nutrients from the surrounding areas pump themselves into the discs and, and the toxins pump themselves out. Now, this normally happens as a result of movement or motion to the spine in that area. But once discs become deteriorated, they become stiffer. And once they become stiffer, the bones don't move well. And since the bones don't move well, they don't receive nutrients like they're supposed to, which further complicates the issue and leads leads to more disc degeneration. So this is why we're saying that complete reversal is, compl is very, very, very unlikely because by the time this has happened, your, your spine can't do what it needs to do to get the nutrients into that area. 
So therefore, the best way to treat degenerative disc disease is to have, an air, to have a treatment process that's going to deal with the underlying cause. And the underlying cause is typically flexibility of that joint or of that area, and in addition, alignment, structural alignment. Both those things have to be dealt with so the disc has a chance of regenerating and healing some. Now, treatment plans that don't deal with that, they only deal with the symptoms of degenerative disc disease like pain, nerve pain, back pain, those kinds of things, are not dealing with the structural process. Now, chiropractic care can help realign the spine by taking pressure off the discs and the surrounding nerves by addressing the structural nature of scoliosis. And in addition, dealing, to dealing with the strength of the body because as you move the body less, the spinal muscles become weaker and become atrophied. And as they become weaker and atrophied, we tend to lose normal alignment. So therefore, keeping the spine strong in proper alignment after the spine is structured readdressed. We can make the spine stronger doing core strengthening to help maintain natural curvatures and alignment of the spine and help support spinal alignment. Exercises and physical therapy can help increase movement of the area, which can he help increase circulation through that osmosis inhibition process to the affected disc, allowing the nutrients to restore and repair these areas. So therefore, we know um, degenerative disc disease is normally not completely reversible because it happens slowly over time. The symptoms tend to slowly develop over time, and by the time you're diagnosed with it, your degenerative disc disease is relatively, normally relatively moderate, moderate to severe in nature. But very mild disc, disc degeneration can be changed, completely resolved, if it's dealt with properly. But this needs to be dealt with really addressing the underlying cause, which is normally alignment and flexibility of that area to allow the disc to start to regenerate as opposed to degenerate. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.